All right, so as I say, Virginia secedes soon, but, but and this is an interesting question today, if we just read the front page of the New York Times, when Virginia secedes, the western counties, West Virginia, decide to secede from Virginia. This is a, and today, obviously, West Virginia is its own state. These are, this is an area with little slavery of mostly rather poor, mount, it's a mountainous area, rather poor white families uh, who don't own slaves. Only 5% or something of the population up there are slaves. They are much more plugged in economically to, the, to Ohio and Pennsylvania than to the rest of Virginia. And they have no love for the planter elite that controls the state of Virginia. So they put in motion a process which leads to their secession from Virginia. Of course, Virginia repudiates this. They can secede from the North, but nobody can secede from them. Which raises, no, in all these things, it raises what is the proper unit of self-determination, right? Even if you believe in people have a right to self-determination, as the Declaration of Independence said, and as the Confederates said, what is the unit to, uh, to exercise that? Is it the state? Is it the locality? Um, we're seeing this debate played out right now in the Ukraine, right, where some parts of it may think, claim they want to secede from the Ukraine as a result of the crisis going on there. Um, you know, it's, this is always battle, a, a, a source of controversy when nations break up. Let's just put it that way. All right, so four slave states remain in the Union, the so-called border states, right? There were 15 slave states in 1860, now 11 of them have seceded. The borders, the four border states about which we will hear a lot in the Civil War are, Del you can see them up there, Delaware, Maryland, put aside West Virginia for a minute because it's not a state at this point, Delaware, Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri, okay? Four slave states, but they do not secede. And they become the pivot of a lot of action by both North and South, or both Union and Confederacy, in the first couple of years of the war. Lincoln, who is from the border, right, he was born in Kentucky, his wife is from Kentucky, um, he was, you know, he said, if we lose the four border states, then the task before us is too big, he said. We will never be able to defeat the South if the four remaining border states join the Confederacy. And in fact, in the, at least in the first two years of the war, there's a lot of writing about Lincoln's relation with the radical Republicans. And we will talk about that, because it's very important. But Lincoln is also being pulled the other way by the conservatives. The border states are conservative they, for the Union, but they're very conservative. And Lincoln, has, as president, has to act as a kind of unifier. He's got to find a road that will satisfy the more radical North, and yet not alienate the more conservative border. And this is a leitmotif. It's certainly in the first two years of his presidency, and maybe through almost the entire Civil War. In other words, he can't alienate any part of Union, um, union support. But at the first, the first task, he thinks, is you've got to direct your attention at the weakest link. In other words, the radicals are going to support the war. There's no problem there. They want a more vigorous war. They want an attack on slavery. But there's no, nothing that Lincoln's going to do is going to make the radicals say, hey, we're, we're not supporting this war anymore. But the border, is their loyalty is very much uh, tenuous, open to question, and, and certainly uncertain. The border is an area where slavery exists, but it's much less central than in the, than in the Confederacy. Delaware, at this point, has only 1,800 slaves. It basically doesn't exist, the institution, anymore there. Maryland, slavery has been declining for a long time. By 1860, one half of the black population in Maryland is already free. The only state in the Union, uh, well, no, I guess that's not true. Delaware, too. Delaware and Maryland have a majority of the black population free already, which is certainly not true in the rest of the South. Kentucky has more slavery, so does Missouri, but nowhere near as important in the economy as in the Deep South. And the border has, is much more, they are industrial centers there, Baltimore, a major industrial city, St. Louis, a major industrial city. The border has many immigrants, unlike the Deep South, 
Baltimore, St. Louis, some of these places have big immigrant populations. A lot of Northerners live there. In other words, they're not united in defense of slavery um, by any means. But nonetheless, racism is very deep in those places. And certainly there is a dislike of free blacks. And these places do not want to contemplate the end of slavery. Even though slavery isn't so central, they still can't imagine the freeing of all these, um, of all these slaves in their, in their uh, territory. The white population of the border is over two and a half million. The white population of the border is about one third of the total white population of all the slave states, or one half of the white population of the Confederacy. So if they join the Confederacy, it will be a major uh, a victory for the Confederacy. Um, the key state Lincoln felt was his own home state of Kentucky. Um, the governor of Kentucky is not a secessionist, but does not want to go to war against southern states. And Kentucky, in the aftermath of all this, declares neutrality. Says, we are not going to leave the Union, but we are not going to join in fighting against our sister slave states, says the governor. They refuse the call for troops. Kentucky will not provide troops for that Lincoln is calling on. Now, of course, Lincoln cannot accept this publicly. He cannot say that a state can opt out, so to speak. But privately, he does. He says, all right, we're not going to bother them as long as they don't bother us. Um, we're not going to force union control on Kentucky as long as they don't do anything to assist the Confederacy. So for the spring and summer of 18. 61, Kentucky is in this armed neutrality situation. But both sides are trying to influence it. Lincoln is funneling arms through uh, Illinois and Ohio to pro-union um, uh, people in Kentucky. The Southerners are trying to stir up secessionist sentiment in Kentucky. Kentucky, of course, has a strong unionist tradition. Henry Clay from Kentucky, Crittenden, who had tried to compromise the, um, you know, the, the, the secession crisis. Um, and Lincoln's forbearance here pays off. At the beginning of September, with Union troops, if you look, Union troops, we'll see in a minute, about are massing in southern Illinois for a possible movement down into Tennessee and the Confederates send troops into Kentucky. The Confederates make a big mistake. It's the, the, the army that enters Kentucky first is a Confederate army, and this leads Kentucky to th throw off neutrality and say, from now on, we're with the Union. The Confederacy has invaded our neutral space. Um, so, um, it, so Kentucky, the, the danger of Kentucky's secession um, fades out by the fall of 1861, but still, Kentucky is bitterly opposed to anything that might lead to uh, undermining of slavery, and that becomes a, a, a pressure on the, on the Lincoln administration. Um, let me find uh, here. Well, this gives you a little sense. This area here, um, there's Kentucky, is really where an important part of the Civil War takes place at the beginning. We'll talk about it in a minute. But where all these states come together, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, this is where a lot of the important, we'll talk in a minute about some of the first battles will take place, or at least in early 1862. But the point about Kentucky is this. We often hear of the Civil War as a war of brother against brother. That was sort of one of the main tropes of Ken Burns's, you know, documentary series on the Civil War. Kentucky is the state where that was most true. Something like 100,000 Kentuckians fought for the Union and about 40,000 Kentuckians fought for the Confederacy. And many families had soldiers on both sides. Senator Crittenden had one son as a major general in the Union Army and one son as a major general in the Confederate Army. Mary Lincoln had relatives, several relatives, who uh, were died in the Confederate Army. Her family was split also. So it, Kentucky uh, really suffers. Um, from this internecine warfare. 